We are BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. Anti-HS2 campaigners in Warwickshire say a government decision to put £38 billion of improvements to the rail network on hold raises more questions over the viability of high-speed rail. The Department for Transport shelved a five-year modernisation scheme proposed by Network Rail because of serious difficulty with their plans, which the Transport uh, Secretary Patrick McLaughlin says should have been predicted. Important aspects of Network Rail's investment programme are costing more and taking longer. Electrification is difficult. The UK supply chain for complex signalling work needs to be stronger. Construction rates have been slow. It has taken longer to obtain planning consents from some local authorities than expected. But, Mr Speaker, that is no excuse. All of these problems could and should have been foreseen by Network Rail. Joe Rukin is the campaign manager for Stop HS2, um, is based in Kenilworth. Uh, Joe, how did you react to this? Morning, Lorna. Morning. Oh, well, it was uh, what we've been saying would happen for the last five years. We've always said that if HS2 was to go ahead, then other transport projects are going to be cut. Uh, Fair enough, they're saying that they're cutting these back because they've gone over budget, but HS2 will go over budget as well. And the best thing about this is, while everyone was paying attention to the network rail cuts, HS2 Limited snuck out a couple of reports uh, from the major projects authority they've been waiting for for, what, three or four years. This is two of them, one from 2011, one from 2012, which actually confirmed this. Back in 2012, the Department for Transport themselves said, we're not sure, due to the length of time that HS2 will take, due to the amount of money that HS2 will take, if we go ahead with it, we're not sure we can afford everything else that we've got to pay for. That was basically saying three years ago, if we go ahead with HS2, then something's got to give. And this week we saw the first thing go. But conversely, couldn't you argue that, that counter-arguments for stopping HS2, your arguments for stopping HS2, i.e. modernising other tracks that are already there, actually they are. Here, look, they are too costly. We need to start from scratch. Well, no, because this is it. Uh, the, the entire network rail upgrade programme was meant to cost £38 billion. HS2, on its own, is going to cost £50 uh, but when I say it's going to cost 50, no one believes that figure. Uh, because obviously, that, that, that 50 billion, so 50,000 million pounds, is based on 2011 prices. Now, if I went over to the shops now and bought a load of stuff and said, well, I don't want to pay you that, I want to pay you what I would have paid in 2011, I don't think I'm going to get very far. The cost of HS2 are going to go up, and we're way more than this programme of upgrades which would spread all across the network so it shows that it's just not value for money and this is a thing that we think that yes uh, sorry not yesterday now uh, this week it was a watershed moment because all of a sudden people who were thinking well i'm not sure about hs2 but i'm getting my upgrade i'm getting my new station i'm getting my little bit of line straightened so I- I'll-, I'll live with it now that they're not getting that and we've seen this with uh, the leaders in, in Leicester, both the council leader and the mayor have said, hang on, we, we weren't bothered about HS2, but we are now. Uh, all of a sudden, we're going to see that support for HS2 start to disappear because people aren't getting what they were promised. 